Welcome back. Okay. The uh, sides of this, the stem, uh, turned out nice in the sense that it'll tell you whether or not you were cheating, so to speak, by when you cut that knife edge back, if the lines stay parallel, the edges of the new little super elongated rectangles stay parallel, that means you were honest in how you achieved the flats on the, uh, the facet part here. You'd end up with uh, something other than parallel if you had problems along those lines. So we're in good shape there. I left just a tiny, tiny, tiny lip around the on these edges here because we're going to uh, dress, roll over that now square edge into a rounded shape that approximates or matches the the radius of this here. So it'll remain straight. Don't don't mistake this. It's going to not get lumpy like it's been sandblasted, but it's not going to keep the, that prism edge on there because that's not how Dunhill did it. Okay, uh, and here's an aside. While uh, working on all this, I decided that it was I might as well because it was coming up on uh, nighttime, and I thought I'd take advantage of the uh, delay to have the the bowl fully dry. So I went ahead and did my usual washing of the bowl in preparation for a complete refinish and discovered something that's not unusual, but it's aggravating. Uh, if you look really closely, you can see that there's a bunch of impacted junk here that no amount of washing or a brush got rid of. Now you might be able to get rid of that dig it out of those holes if you use a wire brush but I do not recommend it. Wire channels wood. It'll make a raked appearance that's not what you want so avoid using a wire brush on wood. How this happened by the way is clearly the guy that smoked this for a long time grabbed it in such a way that his thumb was always in that spot and sure enough right there we've got like cement and it's just whether it's just compacted skin oils and crud or whether he was a uh, you know made clay pots or something I have no idea but we got to get that out of there and guess what comes to the rescue yep that's just a remember when I first recommended these I said they come in handy for all kinds of secret stuff or clever stuff and this is one of them whenever you get a sandblast finish or a rusticated finish that's so packed with dirt that a little soap and water and a toothbrush won't take it out you have to uh, use something like this so I'll do that again off camera there's it's just gonna listen to the thing revving up and me stabbing away at this uh, so no need to watch that and uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, so I'll get that cleaned up. And if I had any, if I have any problems, I will uh, let you know what they were and how they were solved. So we're almost home with the stem. This next step is one of the trickiest in the sense that if you screw up here, you've just wasted all the hours you spent to this point in time. And I strongly recommend that you take a piece of this uh, hockey tape or something functionally equivalent to it doing things on camera is always so much harder than it is when the camera's off I don't understand that there we go Okay, and don't wrap it around the shank, or the stem rather, because you're going to be cutting this bottom part. You don't want that covered up, but you do want, like so. 
so that you're not going to get too close to this knife edge up here. If you scoop that, you are SOL. There's really no way to bring that back. It'll look like crap and you'll be disgusted with yourself. You'll think what a... It's like stepping on a landmine. It's very easy to do. So I would strongly recommend, unless you're very experienced with shaping of delicate things, that you uh, guard, uh, protect this from inadvertent cutting. And the reason is it's going to take quite a lot of force and uh, uh, persistence to get down this fat, thick, wide area here. And then that kind of a muscle memory as you work your way up, you could find yourself pushing hard. And one or two swipes on that with the wrong pressure will jack it up. So now the bottom isn't nearly as difficult because it's why we're having this focus thing going. There we go. Uh, it's quite a lot wider. It's a good quarter of an inch. And you're going to be making a sharp line to the uh, corners of the button to the corners of this flattened area here. And naturally on the top one it's this, it's a triangle. And uh, definitely uh, mix your strokes. Don't get into the habit of doing this thing or you'll get the dwell time sag. It's the, the key to this is go slow, take your time, check your work often. Check it often. And when you find that you're getting off of straight, come in from the side. Don't try to correct a mistake going end to end. That'll get you in trouble. So I'm going to go uh, attempt to get the crud out of the wood and start working on this uh, slope top and bottom. And then all we have left at that point is uh, the button and a refinish. And that should be it. Alrighty, I uh, just got going on this when I realized that I was not providing an example of actual movement that uh, in tool usage that some people have asked me for. Uh, try, so I, in an attempt to make these videos useful to people of uh, different skill levels or experience levels, I'll uh, do some of the fundamentals here for anybody who might be interested. This is a uh, double aught, uh, a pillar file, meaning smooth e uh, edges are, are smooth and the flats have texture. And it's very coarse. This is the coarsest uh, Swiss file you can get. And we're working on the bottom, but the same technique applies to the top. The main problem when using one of these, when you uh, when they're new to you and you use them for the first few times, is going too far with this roughness. Meaning, you'll get it nice and straight and flat, just the way you want it, but you've got grooves that are below the finished level. The the final dimension you want has. Uh, deep scratches in it that you can't get out without sagging the surface. So keep that in mind. Otherwise you'll notice that I'm not sanding like whittling a stick on a porch. That, that'll get you in trouble. And I'm picking up the weight of the backstroke somewhat, as much as is reasonably possible so that it cuts on the forward stroke. Now, hardcore guys will tell you this is the only way to go, but I've not had any luck with that when doing a, a long shape like this. And periodically, as the, the teeth of the uh, file load up, 
use a brass brush and clean them out. And periodically check your work and there's not much point in trying to show you well kind of yeah, video isn't made for that uh, view there I'm afraid anyhow that is the technique and all that I'm going to do differently between now and when this is finished is reduce the uh, uh, roughness of the uh, the files up to a this is a, a number six which is about the finest one you can get and it'll almost leave a polish it's a single cut number six and then in order to get uh, the uh, the buffing process to work correctly you have to use some sandpaper uh, sanding file marks or rather buffing file marks doesn't seem to work real well but uh, Anyway, I will just progress my way through files until I'm within a very close distance of the, the finished product or finished dimension that I want and then shift over to sandpaper, uh, probably a, a couple of swipes with 320 and then maybe some 600. So I'll shut it off again, continue on my way, turn it back on when I've got the top and the bottom cut.